Joseph Stilwell would be among those who received their baptism of fire. Over there was the patriotic song of the hour. Over there sailed young American manhood to fight in the first international conflict of our history. With the temporary rank of Major, Joseph Stilwell disembarked in France during the bleak, disheartening December of 1917. There followed a brief period of service with the British Division. Then, with his fluency in French, he became liaison officer with the French 17th Corps. For the young Major, there was action at Verdun, Le Fer, Toul, Saint-Mihel. For his service in this last engagement, Stilwell, now Assistant Chief of Staff, 4th Army Corps, received the Distinguished Service Medal. For military attainments of a high order, read the citation. Japan systematically occupied or blockaded one after another of China's port cities. In effect, Japan built a wall around China. Deprived of needed supply from without, a weakened China would be vulnerable to the heavy blows of the invading forces. The former American observer Stilwell was now back home again, serving at California's Presidio. A major general, he commanded the Third Army Corps. Step by step, history was setting the stage for its climactic tragedy. Out of that tragedy, Joseph Stilwell would emerge to play a heroic role. From a country stunned by disaster, General Stilwell was sent to China, there to serve as chief of Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek's allied staff and with a small American staff to take nominal command of China's 5th and 6th armies. The new responsibility brought him his third star. In the absence of clear-cut Allied command lines, General Stilwell's first job was to help in the defense of Burma. Burma offered the only route by which material aid could be fed into China. China must be built up, made stronger and stronger until her allies could join her in going over to the offensive. The Burma, which was to know Stilwell's exploits, had become a battle scene. General Stilwell and his Chinese, together with outnumbered British, Free French and Dutch troops, fought on. But the effort was doomed. through jungle, across rivers and mountains, to the safety of India. In the ordeal, Joseph Stilwell's full stature revealed itself. Refusing the comforts his age and rank might have claimed, he personally conducted one group of 400 battered troops, Burmese nurses and civilians to the safety of India. There, at New Delhi, he was to utter the now classic admission of defeat and announce his determination to go back and wipe it out. There was the honesty, the directness, the tough moral fiber that characterized the man. I claim we got a hell of a beating. We got run out of Burma, and it's humiliating as hell. I think we ought to find out what caused it, go back and retake the place. Although his bluntness of speech earned him the nickname of Vinegar Joe, to the millions of men who served under him, he was the kindest and most modest man who ever lived. To all of them, he was, and in memory still remains, Uncle Joe. The battered campaign hat and shirt sleeves now became a familiar sight.
General Stilwell would not have cared what they called him, as long as they did their job. Stilwell was truly a soldier's soldier. He shared the hardships and dangers of his men and gave the phrase real meaning. Stilwell had the unique capacity for commanding respect and obedience while evoking a genuine affection. Perhaps no group regarded the general and the man with warmer feelings than did the Chinese troops in his command. It was no secret that General Su, as he was called, had consistently extolled their courage and promoted their welfare, often in the face of adverse opinion from above. 